helps if I unmute. Now, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Is there sound? Yes, no sound. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know why I was muted, but now I'm not getting comments. I don't know if anyone can hear me yet or not. Yay, victory. All right. <laughs> Glad that you all can hear me. So we'll start over. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to JP's Budget Collective. Another episode of the Whatever Report where we hang out on a Saturday. Uh, and I ramble for an hour and you guys hang out with me anyway. So I appreciate it. Always glad to see you all in the chat. Uh, yeah, we have my man GT Key in here early tailgating. What is going on? My man Lassa was here right on time, ready to go, which... Might be good for him tonight. He may actually enjoy the show. We will see. We will see. Uh, Gordon, what is happening, my friend? What is happening? We should be back for D&D. We've been off for a couple weeks. It's the Easter and then Alley Cats and stuff. But we should be back playing D&D tomorrow night on Whitewell Comics Channel. I know you always like to hang out with those. Kenneth, my friend, what is happening? What is going on? Last year, tell me I had no sound. Take two. Yes, we're on take two, hopefully. Don't need to take three or four. Debbie Snyder, what's going on? All good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Russell, welcome, sir. Hi. Glad to be. I kind of messed up because I was doing some other stuff and I had my external mic plugged in earlier, but then I unplugged it. I could have left it plugged in, I guess, and plugged in the camera through something else. But anyway, uh, you guys are getting sound through the uh, computer at the moment. So. Um, all right, so glad you're all with me tonight for another episode of the Whatever Report. We got some things to talk about tonight, so uh, it won't just be me trying to figure out something to say. <laughs> I actually have some things I want to talk about. We're going to talk about whatever we're drinking. Decided to drink something that I knew I liked tonight, so we went back to the old Knob Creek 12. Um, I'm not a huge uh, Beam fan, like most of their, but I do really like this Knob Creek 12, so... Uh, we are drinking it tonight, sipping on that, a little bit of that. So, hope you're all enjoying your drink of choice. Uh, admin rules. I don't know. <laughs> oh, in terms of... <laughs> um, so, yeah, we drink on stream. This is not for kids, so I drink on stream. So far, they haven't hammered me too hard for that. So, <laughs> YouTube lets me pretty much do what I want. Um, at least around that front. Uh, so with that, um, yeah, we're going to jump right in to whatever is coming up on the channel. So, uh, oh, clicked off of it. Didn't mean to. Um, so we got several things hopefully happening this week. This should actually be a busy week. Uh, obviously we got this going on right now till tomorrow night. Not on my channel. We'll be over on White Will Comics channel. Uh, I think um, my interview with Moneyball Comics that we recorded is supposed to come out this week, but it may be, it's either going to be this week or next week. He's not sure. So when I know, I will post that so you guys can hop over on Moneyball Comics and check that out. But he wanted to interview me for some reason, but I'm appreciative. It was a good time. We had a good time. Had a good chat. Uh, worth hanging out and watching uh, if you get a chance to watch that. Not sure exactly when that's going to come out. Um, he didn't know if it would be this week's video or the week after. Um, let's see. So those are things I'm going to be doing that aren't on my channel. Obviously, hopefully there will be a cash or trash. I haven't seen Tom's video yet, but um, should be a cash or trash. <laughs> I went back, well, well, you know, we're back upstairs. Uh, at some point, I'll get back downstairs. I just, I feel bad that's in the dog at the stage. I don't know. I don't know. It may be up here for a long time. I may just have to start going back downstairs again just because. Um, so, anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. So, yeah, it should be a cash of trash probably Monday because we're going to play DD tomorrow night. So, I probably won't do it until Monday, even if Tom comes out with this video tomorrow. But the big news that this guy is going to be excited about, maybe nobody else, but this guy will appreciate, is the next Let's Collect is done. It is edited it is ready to go i just need to upload it <laughs> um so i'm probably gonna plan on posting that on tuesday and i figure we'll go on right now and the reason 
it took me two weeks longer than it should have because I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with this ledge class. <laughs> I discovered something I didn't know. <laughs> And but it really didn't directly fit a let's collect banner. So this character is actually going to get two videos, <laughs> two separate videos this week. Uh, one of them, the let's collect is done and edited, and then there's going to be like a comic history fit follow up um, where I go down the rabbit hole of really when did they first appear? Um, that I think should be fun. Uh, I'm still working on that one. Haven't got it done. <laughs> It must be Jocasta. This is not Jocasta. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be two videos this week. And this guy is going to be way more excited than a Let's Collect Jocasta. He's going to be way more excited because I'm going to just show you guys here. I got him as overlays. So you can see what the thumbnail is going to look like. I just need to upload the Let's Collect. The second one, I got a thumbnail, but I haven't finished yet. Uh, but this character is getting two videos this week. And they are going to be... Followed by, so my man, last, uh, is he like, let's see how excited he is. Like, do I get exclamation points? What do I get? Am I gonna get, <laughs> who picked that? I don't know. I don't know who's been like pushing for that for months and months and months. So I've been fibbing to you when I was saying I was gonna do a Marvel character first because I didn't wanna get your hopes up because I didn't know exactly what I'd get done. But yeah, I've been working on the Donna video much like the rest of her, like her in comic origin, come to find out her actual, like from the outside of comics origin and first appearance, it's all screwed up too. Um, yes, technically, we're not gonna go into it, but technically Brave and the Bold 60 is her first appearance, but it's a little more complicated than that. So yeah. There's my man, John. So yes, John came in just after the announcement that made Mr. Lasso super happy. But yeah, we're going to have a Let's Collect this week. Uh, it's going to be Donna Troy. It's going to be coming out probably Tuesday. Well, by probably Thursday is when I'll probably do this. I got to finish this video, but yeah. So we got two videos related to Donna coming out this week. So Lasso should be very, very excited um, that I'm going to get those done. So one of them's done. I just got to post it. The other one is still in work in progress, but it should be done. <laughs> now, I will say, though, Ryan, the result of that is when we get to whatever I've been reading this week, it's going to be nothing because I was going to read today and instead I worked on that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so there's <laughs> not going to be any reading <laughs> to discuss. But from that standpoint, although I got to double check, confirm with my man Bearded, Wednesday, so we should have a video Monday, Cash or Trash, Tuesday, Let's Collect Donna Troy, Wednesday, an indie show video, Volume 3 of Black Science with my man Bearded Comic Bro, although I got to double check, last I talked to him, we were so good for Wednesday, uh, and then Thursday, we'll do that comic history of uh, Donna Troy, so we'll see what you guys think of the comic history thing, that may be something I do, and maybe not, others do it so much better than I do, this is just a fun one I wanted to do. Uh, he does it every episode, of course. <laughs> Actually, I don't think Alex is Alex is really trying to kill our characters, but I don't think he really cares if he does. <laughs> like he's not trying, but he's not gonna not to be nice. <laughs> so, just for the record, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So you should be excited. I expect some like, I expect like lots of views just for Magic Lasso. I expect the, you know, I expect you to like 50 or 60 views on each of those just from you. <laughs> so that, that's what I'm counting on. <laughs> counting on. Put my time into these. I, I need some, I need some views, right? All right. So that is what is coming up on the channel. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I need. That's what I need. Uh, all right. So that's, yeah, those are things that are coming up on the channel. So I'm excited about both of those um, two videos. I think they're going to be fun. I think they'll work out. I always like the Let's Collect. They just take a lot of work. But that does put me in the quandary of who I'm going to do next, which is we're due for a Marvel female character. Um, now that's we finally got 
uh, Donna Dunn. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a poll or I'm just going to pick one for myself. Um, for reminder's sake, the female Marvel characters we have done in the past are Storm, Scarlet Witch, She-Hulk, uh, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, uh, Black Widow, Rogue. <laughs> Those are the six. Those are the six we've done. So, uh, <laughs> let's see. W. Snyder, what's going on? Can't be complicated as people. Uh, it's actually more complicated. <laughs> it's actually kind of. It was kind of cool. I also, Cindy, I will also recommend another video that also explains parts of it. Um, but it's more complicated than you think because the way Donna first appears. Yeah, the way Wonder Girl first appears, the way Donna first appears, like it's it's an interesting. It's kind of, I thought it was interesting, so that's why I'm making I'm making a second video. Um, Los, what is going on? On vacation in Maine with the family, just want to stop and say hi. I appreciate that. Enjoy the vacation in Maine. I Maine is a place that it's on my bucket list to get to sooner than later. I'm hoping to get there because um, I think that would be fun. It's just a bl it is not a joke on you. I don't know if we'll do Dazzler. I got some others that I think are going to bump ahead of Dazzler. We'll see. Um, I mean, I could do Carol. I could do Spider-Woman, Jessica Drew. I could do Emma. I, there's a bunch of characters that I really love. So I may have to do a poll. We'll see. Either there'll be a poll this week for so that by next week we can decide who the Marvel female is, or I'm just going to pick it and run with it. So Because there are so many options. Uh why am I not saying Wasp? I can do Wasp. I can definitely do Wasp. I have not done Wasp yet. So, uh, Jocasta, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So, that is the coming up on the channel stuff. So I think we covered that, including the video that we're going to have to, yeah, we're going to have to pick our next Let's Collect. Um, all right. Uh, what did we pick up this week? We did, belatedly, because they didn't come last Saturday like they usually do. They didn't come. They actually didn't come until Tuesday, which was really late for my Midtown order did come in. So we did get some pickups. Um, my Midtown order did come in. And actually, I didn't even, this one, I didn't even flip around so you could see the cover of it. <laughs> sometimes Midtown puts them in with the back cover forward, and sometimes they put them in upside down. They get them in bags and boards, but it's not always, you know. Um, how you think you want it to appear. So, yeah, there we go. So we got uh, Star Wars High Republic Adventures. This is a one-shot crash landing. Um, I have not read any of these. I have not read anything this week. I was going to do catch up on reading today, and instead I worked on those videos for Lasso. So, <laughs> um, 2024 is the year of death. <laughs> Uh, Swifties watch your video. This is true. Swifties would watch my video if I did Dazzler. You are not wrong. I might actually get some views that way. This is true. Spider Woman would be cool. There are so many issues between uh, and Lighter Woman. Yeah. yeah. So, this is true. Spider Woman would be a rabbit hole I've never really went completely down. Uh, Detective Comics, which I'm even further behind than anything else because <laughs> I've never caught up there. Um, yeah, this is one that's in the bag upside down, but uh, Birds of Prey number eight. Um, I just love the series, but I need to get caught up. I'm behind on my reading. Uh, the Nakayama Poison Ivy 21. Ooh, getting some serious glare there. So, yeah, I think I got all three of the connecting Nakayamas for 19, 20, and 21. And then Batman uh, 140, what are we on? 146? Yeah, 146. Um, so those are the new comic book day comics from the previous two weeks that came in. That doesn't even include this past week. <laughs> so I should be have I should have books again by next week. I am so far behind on my comic reading. It's stupid. It's ugly. Um, but those are the only things that I picked up this week. I didn't pick up anything else. Uh, work has been kind of crazy. Life has been kind of crazy. Um, But hey, we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, um, how do they ship? 
they put them together in a paper bag. Then I keep the paper bag. Oh, I did. So they'll all be together in a paper bag. The paper bag is then put, so they're one group inside a paper bag. Um, and then typically, depending on how many I get, it's either in like a Gemini style mailer or it's in a box with bubble wrap around the paper bag sitting in the middle of bubble wrap in a box. And so far, it's worked every time. Like this, this group, even though there's not that many, did come in a box. Um, thing. So yeah, with bubble wrap around it, not a super deep box, but yeah. So, so far, I think I've only ever had one, what I would call damaged book from Midtown that arrived. Um, yeah, there's only one that I've been like, that clearly got damaged. And it was an oversized, it was bigger. It was one of those like black label, bigger books. And it was larger than all the rest of the comics. So I don't know if that's what did it or what, but yeah. Um, and I've been doing this for almost two years, doing Midtown. Yeah, the summer will be two years. So since I switched to Midtown. So um, I think it's... I mean, I, it's worked out pretty well. I have not had any real complaints about Midtown overall. So, um, although I need to put in my order, my pre-orders here in the next week or so for whatever month we're up to. Um, so it's April, so I'm pre-ordering for June. I think that's right. Or July? I don't know. June, I think. <laughs> so I think it's two months out. Uh, all right. I didn't get, I didn't, we didn't read the crap this week. <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> Did not happen. Uh, what are we watching? All right. Let's dig into it. My thumbnail. I am caught up. So last time we talked about X-Men 97 was two weeks ago, and I just finished episodes two and three. Uh, last week I had not got up to episode four. Um, before we did this, and this week I have watched episode four and five. I know episode five is the one probably everyone wants to talk about. I'm going to start with episode four because I didn't get a chance to watch it until this week. Um, although probably fairly briefly with episode four. Uh, recaps on my overall thoughts. On, I guess I should put the spoiler thing up here just... In case there are folks that have not. And I didn't make a X-Men 97 spoiler. So let's edit this one. Just so. In case someone comes in. They know and they're not caught up. Uh, they will know that this is what we're talking about. So. Um, episode 4. So we got the first, like, two-thirds of that episode. Hey, Frog Bowler. Frog bro Bowler. Bowler. <laughs> Me read good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Frog Brawler. <laughs> first, like, two-thirds of that episode was kind of a silly, was the silly kind of mojo, jubilee, jubilee not wanting to grow up but needing to grow up kind of thing, which was, it was fine. It was a, it was a solid story solid depiction of mojo um gave jubilee some time to shine she hasn't had much time in the season gave um uh, gosh dang it i can't think of the the other kid's name um I'm blanking on him anyway the new guy some time to shine that she's kind of her apparently love interest on x-men 97 um i thought it was fun it was fine uh, the second half of the episode, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Second half of episode four, I'm probably going to piss this guy off if he stuck around. He probably did. I don't know if he did or not. Um, was maybe the one I was looking forward to the most. And maybe I'm, and it's easily the most disappointing thing they've done so far for me in X-Men 97. Um I'm a huge, like John, I'm a huge Storm fan. 
Um, I think life, death, and her losing her powers. Uh, Storm parts to be its own series. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the, and how she reacts to that in the comics and how long she goes without it, I think it's one of, critical to her art, her arc. Uh, John's green with it could be its own series. I felt like the execution was poor. They only gave her like a third of the episode. Um, I don't feel like if you hadn't read Life Death, or you didn't know the history between Storm and Forge going in. Like one of my complaints going up through episode three was I felt like everything was just moving so fast. They sort of ru- they were sort of rushing everything, but the execution had been so well it didn't really hurt. In this case, I thought it hurt the episode. I did not think they did a good enough job setting up Storm and Forge during that episode for the betrayal at the end, for like the twist at the end where she realizes he's responsible. Um, the, and then they didn't even really make him responsible for the gun, but just the collars that they use. And um, I don't know. It just did not work for me at all. I didn't like, I didn't feel like there was any depth to the relationship that they were burning supposedly in this episode and then what's so episode five i was not ready i was not ready nobody was ready for episode five playing in arizona i will get there we were, we're gonna get there i but i i'm gonna do my complaints before i rave about x-men 97 and my complaint my only real solid complaint for the whole season is i and john can tell me i'm wrong like I just didn't feel like they gave enough room or the room they gave it, the execution was not enough to make me care or believe that Forge and Storm cared about each other at the start of this. Like, by the time they got to her realizing what he'd done and him being like, I love you, and it's like, dude, you guys met like 30 seconds ago based on the way this story has been told I didn't feel like there was any weight there at all and that just disappointed me because there's so much weight and I realized they do it quickly in the comics it's only like an issue but for the initial but man it just I don't know it just didn't work for me I'm very curious what others say but I just did not think that end of that episode and then we got the random like is that supposed to be the uh the bear from the new mutant stuff? Like I don't know the owl bear thing at the end that came out of left field. I don't know that whole last third of that episode that was supposed to be life death didn't work for me. It was my huge I thought it was bear island. <laughs> The adversary, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I don't know what was going on. Um, I don't know. I just didn't feel like, maybe I need to go back and rewatch that part of the episode, but I didn't feel like any of that worked for me. Like, I was just like, this is how they're doing this? I I don't know. I was disappointed in that. Now, episode five. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, just reach into your chest and rip it out. They just they pull no punches on episode five. Fantastic storytelling. I even thought, so we'll get to the end here in a second. Um, there were two plots basically going on here. The Gene Scott stuff. And mostly Gene, I feel like, but a little bit of Scott. And... And then, obviously, the Magneto, Rogue, Gambit. The Gene Scott stuff I'm going to deal with first. Because you guys know how I feel about Scott. And it was every, Scott was every, lived up to everything I think about Scott in this whole thing. Which is... And I think Gene was being... 
whining and controlling, but I think it was well handled in terms of like she's trying to get her life back. He's being a little little bit of a bitch in the fact that he won't he's not wanting to choose. He doesn't know what to do. The gene that's not the gene that's not actually gene that had his kids. He doesn't want to abandon the like I thought they handled that really pretty well, all things considered. And I thought it was good storytelling. Doesn't make me like Scott any, but like, but it shouldn't. I mean, he's torn. It's I thought all of that was handled really well. That was clearly the side part of the episode. Um, the part that I thought was magnificent, um, Mr. Gore Vidal. Yeah, it the whole season has been very good. I have very few complaints. I gave my one complaint about episode four earlier just because I felt like it was rushed. Um, now, I agree with this. And X-Men has done this, and comics in general, particularly going back to that time period, have done this crap. Like, it's just icky. And I know there was, like, this whole thing going around on the internet about Magneto being a groomer and the thing, oh, well, she was in her 20s and blah, blah, blah. And, like, no, it's just creepy. It's creepy. It's just wrong and creepy, and I don't like it. <laughs> and I'm trying to, yeah. Um, it's just, but I get what I thought was him. Like I don't like the Magneto Rogue dynamic at all. I've never thought it works. I always thought it was creepy. It's like the Colossus Kitty Pride thing on steroids to a certain degree. I don't care if she's 20 or whatever when it first started um, based on the writer. It's just creepy. <laughs> it doesn't like, but I thought it was handled well in this episode. And I get, I love the way they handled it from Rogue's perspective. So I'm just going to say right here, to me, the best part of the entire season to this point, is the rogue gambit conversation when she goes to let him down. Um, like, you totally get her perspective. I can't, like, I can't touch you. And, like, her desire to just be able to touch and feel someone, and she can do that with Eric, and she can't do it with Remy, and you get where she's coming from, but he's right. Like, and I've never been a huge Gambit fan. This one episode before the, not the end, that dynamic where he talks about, like, I played the role for you that you never wanted to be serious and get, be committed. Like, I played the small brat role for you that I, and but then in the end, he's like, he's gonna break your heart, but I'm gonna respect your decision. We're just friends. Like the way they wrote him and he handled it, like I thought was phenomenal. And I love how he says, Some things are more than skin deep. She's like, not and you know, and she can't in the moment she can't see past it, which totally makes sense for who Rogue is and what she has to deal with. And then I love the scene before everything goes to, you know, which is the way it always works in comics, where everything hits the the fan, where she realizes it, where she's with Eric and she kisses him and she's like, can have contact. And she realizes, no, this isn't, this isn't what I want. Too late, as we will see. But yeah, I thought, I thought those two conversations, her real the conversation between the two of them in the room and then her realization after her dance with Eric were just phenomenal character development and writing and dialogue. All of it was so well done. Contact isn't love. Yeah. And, uh, Rogue and a young girl, rich old dude, and all the, yeah, for sure. But yeah, and she has to realize that, and she does. Like, but for her, it's so much harder because she can't, like, she can't 
be physical with with Gambit the way she wants, the way she's always wanted. And she could do that with Eric if she wants. And just got through watching him. Oh, I hope you watched it because I got spoilers up. Um Yeah, I'm I need to read more Gambit. I maybe I've just missed out. I haven't read a ton of him. Um he's never one of one of my favorites. Uh but yeah, I have so much more love for that character just based on this single episode. And then obviously the ending. Um we'll see how many people are how many characters are actually dead. Gordon's like, yeah, I'm I still miss my Colossus, my kitty. Uh, those are two of my favorite X-Men. They don't really appear in the show. We got so many like little cameos of mutants in this episode, uh, including Nightcrawler, who I love and I was happy to see, but no Kitty and no Colossus. Oh, just... But we got Emma, which was awesome. But um, yeah, that still drives me nuts. So the ending, um... no, <laughs> no, no, no. We did get a Dazzler cameo. Yeah, we got we got a ton. There's a ton of cameos if you watch it. Now, how many of those characters are not dead? Who knows? It's interesting that all of this crap has happened in five episodes, <laughs> and there's two episodes done and a third episode written, basically at this point, or third season written. So two seasons done, and basically the third one. No, no, no. It's it's not that. Like, like I said, like my love for Gambit was changed based on the scenes earlier in the episode, and then they and then they did it, and there's like, oh crap! I just had a new appreciation for him, and then they, but he goes out like a boss. I mean, absolutely like a boss. Saves Rogue, saves everyone. Like, I didn't know he could do like the amount of charge he has to use. To do what he does there, I didn't know he could generate like that much. I thought it was the whole thing was phenomenal. Um, I mean, if we go to like in season two, if we get if we start doing the Krakoa kind of thing, obviously all of these characters could be back pretty. It's comics; they could be back pretty soon. I mean, you got time travelers with Cable. You got yeah, you got all kinds of stuff that could potentially change it. But the ending, which is not his act. But her holding him, oh, dude, just crushing. So well done. And her, just the pain in her voice, like the actress nailed that scene. I saw somebody else like trying to recreate it online and like she nailed that. That voice actress nailed that scene with Rogue. Um I think you're okay. I think you're okay. Um, I mean, Cable obviously tried to come back to save them, failed in the moment. Um, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, I thought episode five, for all my complaints about episode four, episode five was phenomenal. We'll see where they go. If they leave those two... The two obviously, and there's some other characters that look like they're dead there that aren't really necessarily a big part of the show, but are big parts of X-Men and mutant history and lore. Um, but obviously, if they leave Magneto and Gambit are both dead, it'll be interesting to see where the show goes and who they bring in. And yeah, definitely be interesting to see where things go. Uh, I don't think so. Because... <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Time to buy the days of future past. There you go. There you go. Um, but no, it was it was phenomenal. I loved episode five. Uh, it really did, like, in a lot of ways. It's funny that, like, one thing can change your perspective on a character. Like, one story, one movie, one show can change the way you think about a character. For me, I think it did for Gambit. It it I've never been a huge Gambit fan. He was fine. I didn't dislike. He's not Cyclops. I don't dislike him, but I never was a huge fan. That episode was phenomenal and gave me appreciation for the character I never had. So, 
All right. I think we've talked enough about X-Men for now. Um, looking forward to see where it goes from here. Five more episodes. So, uh, what else we're watching? Not really anything this week that we got added to it. Um, oh yeah, I was more emotional. Like, like I wasn't super emotional, but her like voice in the scene where she's holding him. Like that. If you don't get emotional watching that, then what are you doing? <laughs> like I, I'm very, I get very emotional very easily in these kind of things. Um, but yeah, I don't. I would say the name. He sucks. <laughs> so I'm not afraid of him. Um, I was going to give Van Christner a book with him. Well, you know, if you watch the show, there you go. That's all it needs. Um. Uh, I haven't seen it. I'm not a big Godzilla monster movie kind of guy. I mean, I have yields of things, but I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't seen any. The only one of that whole new MonsterVerse movies was the very first Godzilla mo movie. It's the only one I've seen. I haven't seen the second Godzilla movie. I haven't seen Kong. I haven't seen Kong versus Godzilla. I haven't seen the new one. Yeah. Yeah. That line, I can't feel you like, oh my God, just heartbreaking. Which was, you know, and it, of course, went back to their conversation earlier in the episode. Where she was rejecting him because she couldn't feel him. And then now she really couldn't feel him. And just, oh, just soul, yeah. And then she realized, you know, there was more to it than that when she tried to be with Eric and then she was going to go back to him and then didn't get the opportunity. So yeah, it's just, and he, and the other part of that is he dies not knowing the choice she made. Like she makes a choice at the end of that dance when she tells Eric it really is more than skin deep. And like she's made, she has made a choice to be with Remy and he doesn't get to know that. I mean, and the, so then her reaction at the end, that she left him, like his, their last conversation, real conversation was her breaking his heart. Like, and then she's holding him. Like, it just, it's, it's phenomenal television. I don't care if it's animated. It's phenomenal storytelling in that episode with the two of them. And they're not two of my favorite X-Men characters historically, but damn, was that good. It was just so good. So there you go. Um, bring <laughs> um, All right. So, yeah. Uh, let's go on to... We got like 20 minutes. Hang out. The dog. We'll see how long the dog lets me hang out. What do you guys want to talk about? We're, we're, we're into your time now. We are into your time. Yeah. <laughs> Kong, <laughs> the Green Lantern ring. Was that in the Kong versus Justice League book? Godzilla Kong versus Justice League book? He's going to get the ring? That, that would be cool. Um, in the comic. I, have, I know people that read. I don't know if that story ended yet. I don't know. I know people that were actually enjoying that. I didn't read any of it. But um, it is in the book. Okay, it is in the comic. That's kind of, that's kind of fun. Yeah, I haven't read any of that. Uh, so, oh, you were, that's what you were referring to, Alan. Okay, you were referring to the comic Godzilla versus Kong versus Justice League. Yeah. Um, I've heard really good things from several people that I respect that that's just a really been a fun ride, but I have not read any of it. Um, what do I think is the next Omni I will purchase? I got several in my um, in stock trades, like wish list at the moment. Um, oh, I do have something else I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, that you, none of you can, like, all of you have to stay away from. But let me, let me pull it up. Uh, let me pull my insect trace thing up. 
because I need to make an insect trace order. I'll probably make one here at the end of the month. Um, there's a couple of Captain Marvel Omnis that are on my list, uh, both the Kelly Sue DeConnick and the original one that John got earlier this year. Um, those are both on my list. Uh, there's Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus hardcover number one. I've considered the Gail Simone Wonder Woman ones on my list. I've thought about trying to get some of those X-Men Omnis that John and Justin have been doing, if I could find them. Um, I thought about going on and getting the Nightfall Omnibus. It's on my Emmy in here. Uh, what other Omnis are in here? Gotham Central Omnis in, still in here. That's kind of the ones that are currently in my kind of wish list folder on in stock trades. We'll see what I end up actually end up buying. Um, I don't know. I won't be getting all of those, but those are some of the ones that are in there right now. We'll see where I go uh, for the next one. We're going to pull something up real quick. Um, so if you saw my story on Instagram yesterday or last night into the day, I need somebody's going to C2E2 because I'm not going. Because they're doing, I'm just going to, let me pull it out. Pull it out over here. Uh, let me share. Share screen. Look at those. Oh, it went off of them. Hang on. Let me get where I can actually like make it stay. What's going on? Ah, it's being ridiculous. Hang on. It's being, it's being silly. But Bird City Comics, Mr. No FOMO, don't like, don't buy weird variants, blah, 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 blah. Come on, go back to it. Look at that. Homage, Jenny Frenny version homage in the center to Batgirl number, tw that Middleton Batgirl 23. They're doing a foil Batgirl 23. This version homage and Derek Chu homage to my girl Barbara. Holy crap. I need that cover. I need that version. <laughs> I need it. I know they're doing a pre sale. Maybe I'll get it then. If not, I'm going to need help from somebody going to CTE too because that version in the center. Holy crap. I think it's gorgeous. I need it. FOMO will have me. <laughs> it's probably going to go for crazy money, and I probably won't be able to get it. But, and I will be so sad. Look at that thing. It's freaking ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Officially, throwing everything I've ever said about FOMO. I need it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you caught up on Rock Exodus earlier. Listen to good reading. I just got caught up on Rook. Actually, oh, I haven't read any of that Geiger stuff yet. I need to. I haven't. I've heard good things. I haven't read any of it yet. Oh, this book is good. Who night? Deathlock. Miss Marvel. Reverse Flash. There you go. Bunch of stuff. Oh. Uh, I mostly like reading an actual book, but I have been reading some more digital stuff lately. Um, and it's good. Batman New 52 Omnibus. Uh, I don't know if I'd get that or not. There's some stuff in there that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, the new Doctor... I don't... You know, I might. I haven't read any of the new that new series. I have the original Doctor Afro Omni. Uh, her second series, I might have to get that. I didn't read any of it. So... I don't know, Coach Vic. That may be on the list for sure. I have, I have the, so there's a one in 100 version. It's like the Virgin. And then there's just a regular Frizen one. I have the regular, I pre-ordered the regular Frizen one. Um, I'm 99.99% sure on that. Let me double check. Um, so you're talking about, if we go back to my share screen here. 
I'm talking about that right there. Um, and that is the 1 in 100 Virgin, which I do not, I did not pre-order. I don't have coming. I would love to have it, but I'm not probably going to pay the prices it's going to take. But the... Uh, for May, oh, I'm, I'm a year behind here. January for March 23. Spider Wing Ghost Fra Spider Volume 1, number one, cover D Frizen. I pre ordered. Uh, so, yeah, the non virgin version I will be getting. Uh, so, I will get a copy of this, just not. I will I will own this, just not the 1 in 100. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am also fine with the regular trade disc. <laughs> Although it'd be cool to have that one in one hundred because it is a gorgeous cover. And but yeah, I did pre-order that. Um, yeah, it did just end. I just didn't read any of it. So the only Star Wars stuff I've been reading is that Darth Vader and the High Republic stuff. So that I've been buying and reading. Um, Anything else? What else you guys want to talk about? Well, I think I'm caught up. Um, I mean, the Lobos one, I almost had pre-ordered the Lobos one, but I don't really, it's like trying to look a little bit like Emma Stone, I think, but like I'm a fan of Lobos, but I don't particularly like that Lobos one there in the center. The Mona Moco one's fine, but yeah, that Frizzin is ridiculous. I don't like this prison. Ridiculous. <laughs> Though I don't know that I like the curly hair, but God, otherwise, I think that's the first time I've seen her draw a Batgirl, too. I need it. Fun will be damned. I'll spend stupid money for that one, probably. <laughs> uh, DC does it all the time. DC does it all the time, too. They both do it. They both will make an incentive that's just the virgin of another cover. It drives me crazy, but and usually means the virgin doesn't end up holding a ton of value. It ultimately kind of devalues both of them. Like whereas it's a great cover if it's a great cover that potentially even as a just regular cover could take off, it doesn't because the virgin incentive exists and the virgin incentive doesn't usually jump to the kind of crazy values that it could because the trade dress exists. So, I mean, I guess it lets people get them for a little more affordable, but it, it's just an interesting strategy that I don't, I'm not a huge fan of. Do I trading card game? I see you have Funko stuff here. Uh, I did all my, almost all my Funko collecting was from like 2015, 2016, 2017. Before I got back into comics, I've probably bought, I've bought less than 10 Funko since like 2018, since I got back in comics. <laughs> um, still have them, I enjoy them, but uh, most of my purchases were all from before. Um, I don't really do the trading card game stuff. Um, I don't really do trading cards. I've I've been tipped in multiple times to get into cards, and I just don't do it because comics suck up so much of my income, and then now I've been dabbling in bourbon, although I don't really have a bourbon collection, but yeah, I, I just don't. I just, I've been tempted. The One Piece stuff that No Good Comics Justin play shows all the time, I'm like, oh, some of those Marvel cards, DC cards, yeah, I've, I'm super tempted all the time. Also, I'm super tempted by Legos, and I've managed to dodge that rabbit hole as well, not fall down that well, but um, so currently, comics and trades and hardcovers of comics is where most of my goes but um i could easily go down other rabbit holes for sure he remains hopping in for the last few minutes but we are still here so i'm glad to see you my friends they all of it's cash man all of it costs money it's crazy uh, yeah i need to like read more than i have been uh, I need to read some other stuff. I need to get back into my One Piece reread, and then I need to be reading some other stuff also. 
Is there some other good stuff? I got I got started on the Chainsaw Man and I stopped. I never went back to it. Um, I know there's been a ton of good stuff that people love that I just have not been reading. I'm completely, of course, One Piece is on hiatus at the moment. Uh, I did. Well, I haven't been watching the live act or the the uh, anime anime the anime for a long time. But I did see the clips of Lucy versus versus Gear Five Lucy. Lucy. Luffy, Gear 5 Luffy versus Awakened Luffy. Oh, looks awesome. I need to start watching again. Oh. Better when I'm Mountain Time get kids everything. Uh, you know, it's here. It'll be here forever. You can watch it. You just don't get to hang out live to your remains. But I appreciate you stopping by anyway. Um, people saying hello to each other. All right, we got like Eight minutes. Anything else? John never did like comment on my. Uh, I'm very disappointed that he did not comment on my take on life, death, and my disappointment. I wanted to hear what he said. I wanted to hear if he thought I was crazy. Oh well. Um, but yeah. Also, again, am I going to C two E two? I need that middle one. I need it. <laughs> so, oh, he was watching a movie with Charlie. Nice. Nice. Always a, always more important than hanging out with me. So <laughs> I do need to ask you if you uh I always think you're crazy. <laughs> this is this is appropriate and accurate. Don't make me hunt you down and punch you. <laughs> Can I do a JP con? I'd love to do a con right now. Um I'd love to do it, but just not in the cards right now. I would love to go to C2E2 this time. I would love to do... There's a lot of things I'd like to do. None of it's in the cards at the moment. I'm kind of locked in for a few months. We'll see how many months. I don't know. Um, but there's not going to be much traveling for the immediate future. We'll see how much longer that lasts. Um, you know, we're in this weird stage. I'm kind of locked to the house because, you know, he needs a lot of care. The pup is not very mobile, um, but he's still a big dog. So I got to help him get around. And my folks can't really, like, he's too big for them to really deal with. And, um... And so, yeah, he's basically disabled at this point. It's like helping around a disabled person. But he's still completely mentally sharp and functional and alert. And I can't imagine, like, ending it because he's an inconvenience. So right now he's just a big, he's just a big inconvenience. And I have to take care of him. But you know what? For all that he's given me for... 14 and a half years, I can do it for a few more months. So we'll see how long it takes. So, um, yeah. Uh, plus Life TV. So we can cut satellite. I've been on Hulu Plus Live TV for about three years. Maybe going on four at this point. I cut the cord a long time ago. There are things I love about it, things I don't. Um, I've considered maybe trying like YouTube or something else just to see, but they added the MLB network, which helps me. Uh, I still can't get my Royals on TV because the Valley sucks. Um, so I mostly end up listening to them on the radio. Although the last few years hasn't been a big deal because they've been, they've sucked, but this year they're actually might be good. So I may have to figure something out there, but um, overall, I don't have a lot of complaints about YouTube with live TV. I've enjoyed it occasionally. Like anything else, it goes down, but I don't know. Cable used to go down occasionally. So um, it's definitely a little better deal. Where it's not a better deal is when you do it and then you do Amazon and then you do Apple and you do Netflix and you do HBO and you do, and then you end up having as much as you did when you had cable, but you actually get more options. So yeah. I have not done crutchy roll. Um, I may have to, because I may, we'll see. I've been super tempted. So I've been watching this um, 
you guys know after I did the One Piece, the live action, I started my One Piece reread, which just kind of paused here the last month or so. Um, but I need to get back on it. Uh, but I've been watching the these YouTubers that live react that have never watched One Piece that from the live action decide to watch the anime. And it's making me want to watch the anime again. <laughs> like their reactions and their love for it. And like in my reread is making me want to rewatch the anime and get caught up. So um because I haven't watched the anime since basically Dress Rosa. So it's been a long time since I was a consistent watcher of the anime for One Piece. And I know there's a lot of other cool animes out there, but yeah. Um so probably need to do crunchy roll at some time for sure. All right. Yeah, we're at the end. Uh, anything else? A reminder, stuff that's coming up. Um, hopefully I'll actually read some stuff between next week and you guys will get some updates on some reading next week when we do this. But um, Cash or Trash should be out. We're playing D&D &D tomorrow night. Just got to repeat. Uh, do I know Windstar Casino? Not really a gambler. Um, I've heard the name, but I don't know where you're talking about. So, Black Label Rogues Trade. Black Label Rogues Trade. Interesting. That's how I am about Hanukkah. Hmm. Um, how good was the eclipse? Uh, it was okay. We went out 2017. I think we went like almost total. Uh, or very close to total, I think, where we were at. Like, or maybe maybe it was a total. I forget where I was at. Here, we got to, like, supposedly 93%, which it didn't really get that dark. I mean, it got a little bit, but it didn't really get that dark here. Um, I went out, and I didn't get, like, nobody had eclipse glasses here. So I ended up going out. I went to the office. I was working from the office that day and not at home. I went out to the shop and uh, the mechanic we used his uh, welding <laughs> welding helmet and he could darken it and we basically put it on the darkest setting and looked at it through that. It was cool. It was cool. It was through a green tent, but it was cool. Um, but yeah, we didn't, it wasn't super, it wasn't as good as it had been, but it doesn't get like, that's like the best it'll be here unless you travel to like 2045. So um, so we did look at it for a few minutes. Um, the thing I'm hopeful for, which we haven't had since like Haley, uh, like for a long time, not we've had someone since Haley's, but supposedly there's a rumors that this fall we may have our first co great comic comet in a while. Um, they're not 100% sure yet how visible it's going to be, but it could be like actually visible to the naked eye like in September and October. So that I'm looking forward to because I, I think that would be, that's cool um, from a celestial standpoint because we don't get those very often. So that would be pretty freaking, I've seen, I know I've seen at least two totals in my life. One when I was a kid and then one, that one in 2017, I think was a total where I was at Eclipse um, or like 98 or 99%. It was super close. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, I'm hoping for that. That would be cool if that actually turns out. They're like, they're not sure. You may have to look at it through binoculars or something to see it. But uh, they think there's a chance still that it might be a actual visible to the naked eye. Um, yeah. Very cool. Because it's still super bright. Like, like once it's a totality during totality you can take the glasses off like you don't need the glasses like you're you're you can remove them and you're fine um during those few moments when it's at totality but like at 93 percent it was like it was bright enough like i looked up at it without just for you know just kind of look like and i couldn't tell anything i couldn't tell anything was going on like just at a glance at it and then you look through the things and it, before he even darkened the helmet all the way, like the initial setting on the helmet, it was like, it was hard to look at even through the welding helmet at like the lighter setting. So he like went in and he had a, he had one he could adjust. 
and he darkened it and then you could like then you could actually see it it was no big deal it didn't hurt your eyes but like it was not like when i first looked at it through the set even the welding mask i was like oh that's bright so yeah there's still a ton of light coming um yeah yes yeah they definitely can like i didn't like i just kind of glanced up to see like can you even tell that the moon's there you could not like it was just for the moment like you would like look across the sky it's like you can't tell there's anything going on without just like looking up at the sun on a hot day i mean you couldn't tell anything was happening without staring at it and which i wouldn't do but then like so yeah and even with the shield initially it was it was like it was hard to look at so um okay uh yeah so stuff this week uh, let's collect down tro- so cast your trash Monday. D and D tomorrow night on White Wolf's channel. Cast your trash Monday. Um Tuesday, let's collect down Troy. Wednesday, hopefully um Black Science with Bearded, volume three. Thursday, the second half of my Donna Troy videos, the comic history thing. Uh so yeah, it should be a busy week on my channel. Some point either this week or next week, I will be my interview with Moneyball Comics will air. Um, he wasn't 100% sure he's supposed to tell me, and I will let you guys know when that's going to be out. So, and yeah, we'll figure out what's going to be the next Let's Collect. I don't know if I'll do a poll or if I'll just pick. We'll see. Um, you guys didn't give me a lot of options. So other than last year, not many people jumped in to say what I should do on a Let's Collect. So, uh, all right. With that, we're over the hour. Um, well, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I always enjoy it, and yeah, yeah, he was awesome. It was it was a good time. We had we talked. I was long winded. It was supposed to be like a thirty minute thing, and I think he's got like fifty minutes of video to edit. So, and we didn't even get through all the questions he originally sent me. So, shocking. JP likes to talk. Also, you know. If anybody, before I get out of here, if anybody wants to just like go to C2E2 and get that Jenny Frizz and Batgirl for me, uh, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd be like, yes, thank you. Because <laughs> the FOMO is going to get me on that one. <laughs> Maybe I can snag it when they do their little pre release. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to see it blind me a little. <laughs> no, that's why we went out and got the goggles. Um, or they got the, the helmet. We were just holding it up. We weren't looking through it, but we were holding it. Uh, we were looking through it, but we weren't. We didn't put it on. We were just looking through it. But yeah, it looked cool. It was cool. Like, I mean, it was just a sliver. Like, when you looked at it through the helmet, it was just a sliver compared to, like, without the helmet just glancing up. Like, you wouldn't, you couldn't even tell. It wasn't even really dark here. And that was 93%. So, yeah. All right. With that, I uh, hope you all had a wonderful weekend and, or have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I uh, hope it's been off to a good start and I'm going to get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Uh, reminder, Tuesday, Thursday, a little bit for Lasso, a little extra, a little extra for my man Lasso. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoy those videos. It was fun. It was a fun little rabbit hole that Thursday video is turning into. So we will talk to you later. Bye.